delighted to be joined by the phenomenal one himself. It is AJ Styles. He is going for the world title this Sunday, uh, and we can't wait to see it at TLC WWE Network. AJ, how are you, my man? I'm good, man. What's going on? A lot, a lot is going on, and I That's just fair. said, well, it, well, a lot in the wrestling world. Uh, uh, outside of that, not so much. I think we yeah. both really agree, right? In fact, we're ready to open up and start doing some things. I know, I know, I am. We're getting stir crazy. I know. I feel like I haven't been to a wrestling show in forever. Um, but on the list of things I need to do, my God, there is too many. But nonetheless, I still have the pleasure of watching wrestling from home, and I do get to watch TLC this Sunday. Um, it's going to be awesome. You know, obviously Drew McIntyre is kind of a compatriot of mine, but there's no bias here, AJ, of course. I'm sure, I'm sure there isn't. <laughs> uh, but I just wanted to get your thoughts on this matchup because he's told me a ton of times how you're like one of the guys that he's always wanted but never actually had. You've kind of been in the same promotions but at different times. Uh, and now seems to be finally the right time. And what a 2020 he's had. Like, this match feels big. Uh, no, this is – it's a huge match for me because I'm going to win the WWE Championship. Uh, I've been in TLC a TLC match before. In fact, I defended the the championship in TLC. Uh, will McIntyre do the same? Uh, I think the cards are stacked against him. We're talking about a guy who has more experience than him, and not only in the world of professional wrestling, but – in the TLC match. I also have a guy named Omos. He's seven foot three and really scary. Mm. I'm not saying he's going to get involved. I'm just saying if, he, if I wanted, to, wanted him to, he could. Uh, but Omos is there for a different reason. We'll get to that later. I think I have the experience to beat Drew McIntyre at TLC. And what do you make of the, the 2020 Drew McIntyre has had, though? Because um, he really has kind of cemented himself as a top player in WWE. And I think that is one of the things that makes this match, you know, on paper, it's great anyway, but now it's, it feels like two real top talents collided. Well, I mean, listen, McIntyre, he is the champion. He is the guy right now. He is, well, for right now, unstoppable. He's a beast. He didn't deserve anything. He's earned everything that he's got in that ring. So uh, kudos to Drew McIntyre, but he's held that championship long enough. Mm. Uh, and you just mentioned almost that brings me on nicely to the next subject. Um, what a formidable man he looks. Um, I want to ask how that came to pass because, and I know offense to almost here, I was really enjoying Joseph Parks by your side. Um, you know, that was a cool tandem for me to watch. Yeah, I think that was for everyone who watched uh, TNA ever. Uh, you understood what was going on there. But, uh, you know, Joseph Parks is a bit of a, a powder puff. And, uh, I, you know, I need someone. If I need someone to handle my business side, I'll get Joseph Park. But right now, I need uh, almost to be by my side. Uh, listen, there's a lot, of, a lot of guys that will not only stab you in the back, but will, will knock you down and step on you. Almost is there to make sure that doesn't happen to me. Mm. And um, what, what do you make of, of almost thus far uh, playing his role with you on TV and just working with a, a young talent like him in the business? I think it's great. I think that if there's ever an opportunity for a, uh, a young and upcoming guy or, or girl to, to, you know, have a mentor of some sort uh, like I did. I mean, I, I got to work with Ric Flair for a little bit and just the little things that I learned from him were huge in, in my business. So if I can share with him little things that can make him better in the future, that's a good thing. Uh, he's, uh, he's like a sponge. He listens. He's ready, willing, and able. You know, we just got to make sure that when he does his thing, it's special. Well, you saying special leads me on nicely to WrestleMania this year. Um, what a tremendous thrill that was to see how you and The Undertaker came out. Because the Boneyard match, I mean, when, it, when we started hearing about it, everyone's like, man, what's this going to be? And then it was just an amazing, amazing match. And not only that, it's turned out to be the final match of The Undertaker. For yourself, I know you've talked about this a little bit on documentaries and whatnot. But for yourself, that must be like a couldn't have even imagined you'd have the undertaker's final match. Well, uh, someone asked me who do I want for my, you know, retirement match and whatnot. And I go, I have no idea. I don't know when I'm going to retire. How can I even think about that? And there's no way the undertaker was thinking shoot, even 
a year before WrestleMania that I'm going to have AJ Styles, you know, be my last match. He wasn't thinking about that. You know, I wasn't even on his list. I'm sure of it. But things happened the way they did. Uh, it literally was a phone call making him think about some things. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, you know, I think it was being on the verge of thinking about retiring and then having that match and going, wow, how can AJ and I even top that? It was done so well. And it, it was a lot of effort brought by a lot of different people. Uh, but the most, of course, was done by The Undertaker. I was just there to, uh, you know, stand beside him and do my thing. But, man, he's the reason why that match, that Boneyard match, gets so much praise. Can I ask, uh, I know this is a, a quite a common question in terms of, man, wouldn't that have been great in front of fans? And I'm sure the thought has passed through both of your minds. But has, you know, you talked about it yourself. You picked up the phone once before, um, before knowing that he was officially going to retire. Is that something you discussed? And uh, I guess the, the second part of that would be, in terms of like what the understanding taker was going to do next before survivor series like how long did you know and then you know when did you finally realize ah we're not going to get to do that well uh as far as the the match and him thinking that was going to be his last i don't think he knew nor did i that that was the one that he needed to end on um it was just it was just kind of happened uh and you know i i literally called him a month after uh, WrestleMania said, listen, I need to know if you're done. I need, <laughs> well, he never called me back. Cause I think he was afraid that I tried to talk him into one more. <laughs> so, uh, we talked and, uh, you know, but it, it was right. He, he did it the right way. He did it on his own terms. He didn't have to do it because of an injury or something else. He's the one that said, you know what? I'm okay with ending it right here. And, and there's something to, to be said about something like that because, Injuries plague this business, you know, and you never know how long you're going to be able to hold out. And, uh, yeah, good for him that he was able to call his own shot. Mm. Last one on that taker. Um, there were some teases, like, you know, where he was kind of haunting you for a little bit, like Money in the Bank. There was that little scene and stuff. Was that was that done to maybe keep things open with the possibility or was it just for something else? I have no idea. I didn't I didn't call that i didn't say anything about that they said hey what if we did this and i was like okay well you know whatever uh but uh i have no idea why they put something like that in there but maybe it was a just in case my wrestling fan just going into overdrive i'm reading in too much yeah right Um, we all do yeah uh you you mentioned earlier right you're sitting in your glorious uh twitch room and i've got to say man you were one of the most refreshing good value people on twitch you know you engage with fans so much and uh you know so many it was basically like you're getting interviewed every week where you were right. doing your gaming. It was really great. Um, obviously, we know the edict came down from WWE and things have changed. Did you um, try and have a conversation with Vince at that time? And also, I guess when wrestling is done, maybe, do you plan to go back to it one day? Because you were really great at it. Well, uh, I did myself. Xavier Woods and Sasha Banks uh, had a sit-down meeting uh in Connecticut with Vince about this whole situation. And it was determined that, you know, it's intellectual property. Uh, this is <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, we, we do well as far as, uh, you know, the WWE and if there's an opportunity to, to, to pay back that money that, uh, you know, we work hard for in, in different times, then it, we probably should. Uh, now I was doing this, long before the lockdown, before the coronavirus, I was streaming and doing my thing. Uh, So I was always doing it on my time off. It wasn't during. So things happen. They do that. Listen, I wasn't happy about it. No one was, but it is what it is. I'll handle it the way that I have to. I'm a team player. Well, you know, he's, he's the captain. Uh, I'll follow his lead uh, as far as Vince is concerned. Uh, Will it change? Will something happen? They're working on it as we speak. Uh, Will I be happy with it? Probably not. Uh, but the opportunity to be able to stream uh, in, in the future is definitely wide open. I have, I obviously have the equipment. I just don't have uh, yeah, an opportunity to do that right now. I'm very jealous that you're set up. I'm not going to lie. Um, well, I, 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 so that gives me a, a quick moment to go. Thank you, Corsair, for being so kind to me. <laughs> there you go. What a, a UK national radio plug right there. Um, <laughs> I, I also want to touch on before we, I know we have to finish up shortly. Um, 
the ladder match this year with Jeff Hardy and Sami Zayn. Man, that was good. Um, to me, that felt like an instant classic. I just want to get a little bit of insight into how that was put together and how you felt after that, because the finishing sequence to that match, I don't know if you want to... It was very to- odd, wasn't it? Yeah, it was well, very different. Uh, class. I-, I can't take all the credit for that. In fact, neither. You know, we all put our little ideas that we had into it. Uh, but Jamie Noble is the mastermind behind so often it's jamie noble man he's so often. man he's the guy that you want to work with when you're you're doing your match he, he's a genius uh he came up with these ideas they were funny they were great and my, my whole thing about the ladder match is guys let's just not try to do spots right mm-hmm. let's let's do what we need to do if things work out the way they do i just it's all been done before so let's just try to make it different uh, and, and basically what we did was we told a story. We told a story in a what is not known to have stories in it in a ladder, a ladder match. Uh, Jeff Hardy still was able to put Sami Zayn through a ladder, which was unbelievable. Hmm. Uh, but Sami Zayn was just slick enough to have handcuffs, uh, you know, and not only have handcuffs, pull out a key. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. Now, and the truth is, had, you know, I don't know if anybody noticed, I, I, as I was locked up with handcuffs, I couldn't go down and I couldn't go up. Like, it was a brilliant move by Sami Zayn. Uh, everyone hates to see it and say it, but it was. So I couldn't I couldn't get to the, uh, you know, the belt if I wanted to, the championship if I wanted to. So it was, uh, I was very happy with that match. I was, I was actually happy that so many else, so many other fans were as pleased as we were because, like I said, it, it was a story then a ladder match was really not heard of. Yeah, I think that's why I loved it so much straight away. You know, because it was, like you said, so different to ladder matches that I'd seen recently. Let's just assume, AJ, that you win the title this Sunday. Let's just assume that. And then we're heading heading into WrestleMania season. I would love to know who AJ Styles would love to be headlining WrestleMania with, with the title on the line. Well, if it can't be Drew McIntyre, then give me Edge. If it can't be Edge, give me Triple H. Yeah, so there's a number of guys that are willing uh, to step up, and it can be one, any one of those. I want, I, I'm telling you, I want Edge. I got some payback. I don't know if you remember what happened to me. I was at the Rumble. At the Royal Rumble Bubble. I saw uh, it. He separated my shoulder with that, that spear. So it's time to get some payback. You said Triple H's name. Is that a call you're trying to make too? Uh, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm. I put him in a situation like I did at the undertaker. You know? <laughs> hey, 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 Hey. Uh, so w- will he accept? Uh, I don't know, but yeah, listen, these are guys that I've all, I've always go, wow, they're, they're great. And even speaking to them, you realize their, their mindset of the way they approach things are totally different than a lot of other performers. They just, there's something about this. It's the reason why he's still doing what he's doing. Mm. You know, NXT is a, is a brand because of Triple H. There's no question of that. So I would love to see how that's going to work in a match uh, with him. Will it ever happen? I don't know. But it's, you know, I'm trying, guys. Um, we love a trier, AJ. Um, so thank you so much for your time today, man. I'm delighted. It's been a pleasure. And can't wait to see what you and Drew do this Sunday. And yeah. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me.